It's time for this week's Know Your Enemy, here to give Giants fans a look at Saturday's matchup against the Vikings from a Vikings point of view. It's Tyler Fornis of the Vikings Wire. So let's get familiar with the purple peeper. Tyler, thanks for joining us. I see you got the Viking hair, man. You're really in character right now. I, I really like it. Skull to you, and let's get this thing started. So the Vikings' strength is their offense. The Giants' strength is their defense. If you're Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell, how do you attack Wink Martindale's defense? Easiest thing is you have to take advantage when Wink Martindale blitzes. That is something that he's historically liked to do. And when you have Justin Jefferson, it's going to be very difficult for these Giants corners, especially without potentially having a Dory Jackson on Saturday, to be able to man up with the best receiver in the National Football League. One of the things that could really throw a wrench into the Vikings plans is Kayvon Thibodeau. He was one of my favorite players coming out of the draft last year. And tremendous talent that has a fantastic motor and the intelligence to be really successful here as a rookie. He's going to go against one of the best offensive tackles in the league in Christian Derrissaw. That matchup, if Thibodeau is able to win on multiple occasions, Derrissaw is only allowed about 15 pressures and three sacks this season. If, he, if Thibodeau is able to win, it could really put a fork in what Kevin O'Connell wants to do. Yeah, the Giants' pass rush by far has been their strength of the season. Kayvon, Aziz Ojolari, Sexy Dexy, Dexter Lawrence, uh, Leonard Williams, they've been getting after the quarterback pretty well, getting them to get off their spot, make some uh, bad throws. So let's talk about you guys' quarterback. It's obviously the battle of the quarterbacks this game. Kirk Cousins, Daniel Jones, who wins this matchup and why? It's really hard to go against Kirk Cousins at, the, at this point. Obviously, you know, from a Giants perspective, you've seen a lot of Kirk Cousins. He started for the Washington Commanders for multiple years. And for the Vikings, this is honestly his worst statistical season. He's got a lower completion percentage, not putting up as many yards and touchdowns. But what he has done is rewired his brain and is playing more aggressively. He's not taking the easy throw consistently, and he's not doing what we call robot conservative mode. He is trying to find his weapons down the field. He's taking more chances, and you saw that on Saturday in the largest comeback in NFL history. I think Cousins with this newfound confidence and his teammates embracing just the dork that he is, something that didn't happen with Mike Zimmer, I think has really elevated this team, and it's a big reason why they're 11-3. and three. Yeah, Kirk Cousins did a great job that during that comeback just getting the ball to his weapons. You saw big play after big play after big play. Really get, was a spark to get you guys back in that game and to ultimately win it. All right, so it's hard – to really say a team that's 11 and 3 on the season has many weaknesses, but where could this Vikings team be exploited? There is really one, two easy ways to exploit him. One is on offense, the interior of that offensive line. Garrett Bradbury, the starting center, he's had his issues, but he's played pretty well this season. Second alternate to the Pro Bowl, but we all know kind of how the Pro Bowl works. Uh, he's probably going to be out with a back injury. Uh, he got in a minor car accident Saturday after the game and re-aggravated it. So you're going to see Austin Schlotman, who is honestly below replacement level. So Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams could easily have a field day. And especially with Ed Ingram, the rookie second-round pick on the right side, he oversets quite a bit. So you could see some... Uh, some interior moves, some stunts to really take advantage of that. And on defense, the Vikings play a lot of what you call shell coverage. A lot of quarters, a lot of cover two, a lot of cover six, which is a combination of the two, often known as quarter, quarter, half. Um, if you are able to take advantage with some beaters uh, where it puts the safeties in conflict, they are not communicating well on the back end, and Daniel Jones could find Darius Slayton down the field. Quarter, quarter, half. Anytime you get a quarters matchup, pin, pin concept, post with an N, Darius Slayton hopefully mm -hmm. can use that 4-3 speed. Daniel Jones let it fly. Giants are going to need some big plays to match the Vikings' ability for, with their big plays. All right, so what's at stake in this game for you guys? What's you guys' why? What are you playing for? We're playing for two things. One, the Vikings still have a chance at that number one seed in home field throughout the playoffs. We saw how much that ended up meaning in 2017 when the Vikings went into Philly and lost 38-7. to And... They, they still could use the number two seed, which would guarantee them at least a second home playoff game. They're one game ahead of the San Francisco 49ers for that spot. But the first tiebreaker is going to be conference record, which the Vikings will ultimately lose if the season completely plays out because all three losses for the Vikings have come against the NFC as they are 5-0 and against the AFC, including a sweep of the AFC East. If they went out, they will have two home playoff games. If they don't, and the 49ers end up eclipsing that for that number two seed, it's going to be a difficult environment to go into Santa Clara and win. 
And the Vikings have only been held to 20 points or below only three times this season. It was all three times we're against the NFC mm -hmm. East. They're one and two on the NFC East on the year. Tyler, thanks for joining us. Skull, love the hair. And uh, uh, thanks for taking your time to joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.